Hi boys and girls, I was just making another drawing here. And you might want to consider making one too. You can make a, well, you don't have to, but I think it would be fun. I made a little suitcase here. You see my suitcase? It's an old school suitcase I kind of used to use when I was in school. Probably about your age. Those are the only kind of suitcases they had back then. And we should be telling G people about Jesus everywhere we go, but it's not always with words. It's with how we behave. Because you can't just walk into a baseball game and go out into the middle of the field and say, Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Do you think people want to hear that right about then? But when they see how you are behaving, how you carry yourself everywhere you go, somebody's going to say, Hey, what makes you act the way that you do? And you can say, I have Jesus in my life. And then you can tell them about Jesus. Let's see. Mm, so we can tell others about Jesus. And there are so many different places where we can go to do this. But our purpose is to prepare others to meet Jesus Christ. Right? Prepare others. So, so here's a game that we can play with our little suitcase here. You have to choose three things that you would take with you. And that's why this little suitcase is labeled at the top that I didn't show you. I can only take three things with me. I can only take three things. My, oh, got my handy dandy marker here. I think that I would put, let's see. I think I'm gonna put some. I think you have to be kind of brave when you ask God for that. And I think it would take some courage with me. And let's see. I would take my... I wouldn't want to carry me thinking practically so that I can eat. I think I'd have to take my ATM card. Or a credit card so I can eat and not carry all that cash. I don't like to carry cash on me. Let's see what else would I carry. I would probably carry a great big smile. Of course, I want to take uh, some kind of device where I can read my Bible. Um, whether that's on my phone or on my tablet. Um, I like to kind of leave my paper Bible in one spot because I've torn up so many carrying them around. Uh, let's see. Anyway, you think of that and play those that same game with your people at the house, okay? And see what you come up with. And you know you can always write me about them. Now we're going to go to our story. And uh, you know where you are, right? All right, so it's time for our winter lesson number four, prepare for a change for December 27th, 2020. And you know where you are. You're in Miss Kathy's class and you know that I'm glad to see you. If you don't know, now you know. Today's lesson, the scripture is from Matthew, the third chapter, the first through the 12 verses, the key verses. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Matthew, the third chapter, and the third verse, B. And we know when we see B that there's an A part and a B part, and they took the last part of the third verse to use for this, okay? So, it's prayer time. Thank you for it everything that you've done for us and everything that you're about to do. Thank you for having us learn about Jesus and what we must do to be saved and how we can be an example to others to come to Jesus, Father God. And we can tell all about him, give us the courage, the wisdom, the discernment to talk to the right people at the right time, Father God. Just flow through us and use us 
be your will and your way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, let's see the words to know first. And the first word is a strange word. It's brood. Brood. Have you heard that word before? It's a young uh, group of young animals, like uh, a group of young birds or a group of um, like young birds hatched from the same mother. That's her brood. The mother hen took her brood of chicks, took care of her brood of chicks, rather. Then there's the word chaff. That's the part that you can't eat from the grain of a plant. And sometimes it's anything that is not worth anything, worthless. And then there's locust. That's an insect that travels in swarms and it can damage crops. You heard them in the Bible. The, lo the locust came and ate all the crops of uh, the people um, as one of the plagues. Okay. The cornfields were destroyed by locusts. Now here's something about locusts in the South. Sometimes we call this animal that's called, that sings in the trees on summer nights, we call those locusts, but they're actually cicadas and they're very different. So you, you don't have to try to uh, destroy them. They're not going to destroy your crops, okay? Pharisee is the next one. Pharisee, the PH, has the F sound sometimes. And one of those times is right now in the word Pharisee. As a member of an ancient Jewish sect, part of the Jewish religion culture. And they stuck to a really, really strict uh, oral and written religious law. And they believed that the Messiah was coming. The, the Pharisee, the sentence goes, were often chastised or fussed at by Jesus in the Bible. The next word is repent. If you feel sorry that you've done something wrong and you completely turn around and do um, just the opposite from then on and never turn back, that is what it means to repent. If you're just saying you're sorry, that's not repenting. If you're saying, I'm sorry, and you're really not sorry, that's not repenting. And if you go back and do the same thing again, you're not repenting. You're just saying you're sorry just to please somebody else. The Sadducee is... Oh, that doesn't look like Sadducee, but that's what that, that word is. A member of another ancient group, they were Palestinian, and they would also disagree with uh, certain people of the Jewish population back then. They um, didn't care much for believing in the Messiah, that, uh, that a savior was coming, and they would take sides with the colonizers, which were the Roman... Roman rulers at that time who came and just conquered the area and, you know, made it into their, one of their colonies. The Pharisee and the Sadducees resented Jesus' ministry and tried to bring him down. And you hear them talked about all the time in the Bible. Oh, let's see. Let's see, she's got that one twice. So, and a viper. I guess you wonder where we're gonna going with this one, but it's a poisonous snake. And a sentence would be, I could see a deep pit of deadly vipers below. Oh, that kind of sounds kind of scary. Like what, uh, what's this name in the movie? Indiana Jones, if you ever saw that movie, he was afraid of snakes. Oh, kind of spooky sounding. The next word is wilderness. That's any area that's still in its natural state. No houses, no people living there, just trees and animals and no people though. So an, an example would be the Boy Scouts camped out in the wilderness. Have you ever been in the Scouts and camped out 
Oh, I remember when I had my brownie tree, we would have fun camping out. So now let's look at the source. Matthew, the third chapter, the first through the twelfth verses. In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the foot of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The key verses prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. We're going to see what that means as Matthew, the third chapter, and the third verse, part B. John the Baptist preached in the desert. He told the people to turn from their sins because the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah stated that John could be heard in the desert. He said, prepare the way for God. Make the path straight for him to travel. John's clothes were made of camel's hair. He wore a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild honey. Remember we said what locusts were? People came from all over to confess their sins and to get baptized in the Jordan River. You think they were repenting? I do believe there were a lot of repentant people. Many Pharisees and Sadducees came to be baptized. John said, you snakes, or you brood of vipers, you heard that in the, uh, the From the Source story? Who told you that you could escape God's punishment? Show that you have changed. Having Abraham as your ancestor won't save you. God can make these rocks descendants for Abraham. He went on to say, Every tree that does not bear fruit will be cut down and burned. Or remember we talked about making fruit in an earlier story. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water because you have repented. The one coming with after me baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is greater than me. I am not worthy even to carry his sandals. He will thresh out all the grain. He will gather his wheat, but will burn the chaff in a fire that never goes out. Oh, what do you think that means? That means the people who refuse to do right, oh, it's not going to be good for them in the end. So here are our questions for today. What did John say to the many people that he preached to?
Okay, he told them that they cannot escape punishment and needed to show that they had changed or repented. Remember we said, you can't just say, I'm sorry. How did John the Baptist describe the one coming? Yes, the one coming would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is greater than me. I'm not worthy to even carry his sandals, he says. So now it is time for our contemporary story. And this week, I've done the contemporary story on a different platform, boys and girls. I'm not too fond of it, maybe because I'm not used to it yet. But I'll go back to the old way because it's more colorful and everything and the pictures move a little better. So, but anyway, here's our contemporary story. Michelle, please see me after class. There is something that I want to discuss with you. Michelle did not know exactly what Mr. Bryant wanted, but she hoped she was not in trouble. After math class, she walked slowly up to Mr. Bryant's desk. Yes, sir. You wanted to see me? Michelle, I've watched how you have led your classmates when there are certain projects to be done. They respect you and you really know how to speak boldly to a group. Now, on next Friday, we have our school Christmas service day. I need someone to prepare the students for volunteering. You have served each year. I, I need you to be the student service leader this year. Oh, who, me? Are you sure? I think you should get someone else. No, I'm sure that you can do it. Just give your best and remember that the other students are looking to you to lead them. Can you do that? I will do my best, Mr. Bryant. Thank you for asking me. Well, boys and girls, we know Ruby always has something to say, so let's go see. Hello, everyone. 
everyone. Ruby here. Have you ever been to the desert? Have you ever eaten locusts and wild honey? In today's lesson, we hear that John was preaching and baptizing. Well, it sounds like John the Baptist was on a real adventure. The desert is a very dry place. Can you describe what it feels like? Looks like? What food can be found in the desert? Let's think about all that John endured to preach about the coming of Jesus. If you could only take three things with you to the desert to live and to tell others about Christ, what would they be? We can discuss it next time or you can email me at Ms. Kathy's class at mail.com or drop a letter to Post Office Box 74514 Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70874. Looking forward to hearing from you soon! Complete the sentences, review today's Bible story. Then for each sentence, circle the word or words in parentheses that most accurately complete or completes each sentence. Number one, John the Baptist came to the, is it desert or forest, and started preaching, turn from your sins, which is what repent. What do you think? Do, 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 do. Okay, we're going to say he was in the desert. Okay. He was in the desert, which both can be a wilderness, but in this case, he was in a desert wilderness. Like number two, John the Baptist was the man that the blank, blank Isaiah was talking about. That the prophet or the king. Hmm, Isaiah, Isaiah. What was Isaiah? Well, if you've been memorizing the Bible, the Bible books, you know that one of the books was named after the one who wrote that, the prophet Isaiah. It's a lot of prophecy in Isaiah. And number three, he's in the Old Testament. John the Baptist was a cousin of, um, of Jesus. He was born close to the same time. I think John was six months earlier. Okay, number three, John's clothes were made of what, was it camel's hair or cotton? Camel's hair or cotton. And he wore a leather belt around his waist and his food was, was it locusts and wild honey or was it flies and sugar? John's clothes were made of... All right, everyone who said camel's hair, you were correct. And what did he eat? That's correct. Correct mundo. Locusts and wild honey he ate. You think you could eat a locust? I wonder if he I'm sure he didn't have barbecue sauce. What do you think? Um number four, John said, I baptize you with water, but the one coming after me will blank you with the Holy Spirit and fire. No, sure, he was going to teach, too, but he was also going to baptize. And who was he talking about who was going to do that? He was talking about Jesus. That's right, his cousin Jesus. 
Number five, John said he is much blank than I am. Is it greater or taller? Of course you knew that. It was greater. He was greater. All right. Let's see, boys and girls. We're going to have a review of the entire lesson from Matthew, the third chapter, first through the 12 verses. And the key verse that says, prepare the way for the Lord. Who is saying that? That's right. John the Baptist is saying that. He's reminding them to prepare the way for him. Make straight paths for him. Make things all clear. Get out of the way. All right. Make it right. And then make things right. Make yourself right. So in this lesson, John the Baptist, as I said before, he was Jesus's cousin and he preached that the kingdom, oh, if you remember too, oh, let's see, John the Baptist was Jesus's cousin and his parents were old. Then in fact, God showed how powerful he was by having this very elderly couple have a child in John the Baptist. So by this time he was probably, yes, he was living on his own and he lived out in the wilderness. He didn't care about material things. Uh, he baptized anyone who had confessed their sins and truly repented. He preached that the kingdom of heaven had come near because, what do you think? That's right, because Jesus was now on earth in human form. So number two, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, these were people that had certain interpretations of the law or what to do with the law. And sometimes they thought that they were better than regular uh, and smarter than regular uh, folks, everyday folks. But anyway, they came to see John to see what he was doing and see what he was teaching so they could make sure that they could criticize him. Okay. And they saw that he was baptizing and then they wanted to pretend like they wanted to be baptized too. And John challenged them. He said, you know, you're being um, kind of fake here. You want to follow... Um, memorize all these laws and rules, but you don't want to really follow the law's real truth. So he challenged them and he called them a brood of a brood of vipers or little children of snakes, right? So he um, he challenged them because they were trying, some of them were trying to just get in with the Romans for their own um, to, to make themselves more important. And he said, oh, that is not the way you should be. So you're all fake. You know, basically you need to get out of here. John quotes Isaiah from the Old Testament, Isaiah 40, the 40th chapter and the third verse as he announces that Jesus was coming because Isaiah, a prophet, had prophesied or foretold the future of Jesus' coming. John believed Jesus was more superior and more powerful than himself because some people wanted to worship John and he wanted to make sure that they knew that he was just preparing the way for Jesus and for them to make sure that they paid attention to Jesus when they saw him, when he came, okay? So he was saying, now look, I'm not even fit or important enough to carry his sandals, which is, you know, those are the kind of shoes they had back then. And the artwork is from Rowan. He's got his name really as part of the artwork down there. It says, may the sun always shine down on you. Oh, it's, isn't this nice? It's all, I like the little nice bright colors. Now, I would like for you to share your artwork or your questions with me. And you can write to me at post office box 74514, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70874. 
just put Miss Kathy on it. it. It should get to me. Um, you can also email me at Miss Kathy's class at mail.com. Miss Kathy's class and mail.com. I'm looking forward to seeing your artwork and your questions. I think I'll answer a question next week because I think I saw a couple of them. All right, boys and girls. So if you want to read from the source with us next week and you didn't get a chance to this week, be sure you get your NIV Bible. Ask your parents if you can have your own, okay? Because you're old enough to now, right? And get away from the little kids' picture Bibles. I mean, you can still look at them, but you need for a really good study, you need that NIV, right? So... Until then, I'm going to see you next week, God willing, because you know, I miss you when we're gone. I love you. God loves you too. And you know the rest of that. Let me hear you say it. That's right. There's nothing you can do about it. All right. Bye-bye, boys and girls. See you next week.